Hello, so this is a video collaboration with Zachariah Kovac of Cosmetics Your Ways. Um, Zach is in education to achieve his BS in chemistry with a double concentration in biochemistry and environmental science. He's got a very keen interest in cosmetic science and has also studied with the Institute of Personal Care Science. I'm self-taught as a cosmetic formulator, although I do have 20 years of experience in the hair and beauty industry, and I'm also self-studying with um, the Institute of Personal Care Science. We decided to team up on this as we wanted to look at a deodorant uh, formulated with sodium stearate. So once you've finished here, please go over and check out Zach's channel and blog, which I will link below. Okay, so I'm going to go through a few experiments in this video, but this was my first one. This was a fail, so I have written about it in the blog and I have given you all of the percentages and stuff if you want to have a look at it. Um, but I'll walk you through what I did. So first of all, we're adding propylene glycol, which is a humectant. And basically this helps to dilute and dissolve the sodium stearate. Um, this needs to be heated to between 70 and 80 degrees C or else you're going to have a lot of trouble dissolving this and you also need to keep stirring it and adding it in tiny tiny little amounts. If you add it all in one big go it is just going to clump. Um, we're also adding to this formula some water. Again it's a dilutant and it helps to dissolve the sodium stearate but it also helps to reduce the sweating from the propylene glycol, at least as I understand it, uh, because propylene glycol uh, does attract moisture from the air. Um, so the higher that percentage, the more likely your bar is to sweat, or at least my experiments have found that anyway. So here I am adding the water. So give that a stir to mix them together and then you can put this aside and we're going to work on our phase B ingredient which is the sodium stearate. Uh, we just need to weigh out 7% for that. And basically sodium stearate is the sodium salt of stearic acid. So essentially what we're making is a soap, which means it has quite a high pH. So this is something you need to consider when you're adding your other ingredients and what I think is the reason this went wrong. So I'm gonna measure this out, put it to the side and work on my cool down phase um, so that I've got that ready to add when everything is combined. And for my cool down phase, my deodorizing ingredient is Deo Concentrate Personal Care, which is uh, zinc ricinoleate combined with a surfactant emulsifier so that it's in liquid form. Um, and so it should incorporate with the mixture quite well. To that, I'm also adding sweet orange essential oil, which in hindsight was probably my mistake. <laughs> and also some Saligard PCG, which is a broad spectrum water soluble preservative. I'm not sure if that contributed to the issues here um, and I have switched it up in further tests, um, but I'd need to isolate it to find out if that did contribute or not. It might be completely fine. I think it was the essential oil that was the problem after speaking to Zach, so watch this space. Anyway, with everything weighed out, we're going to put our water phase in a water bath and we're going to need a thermometer. It is really important to keep taking the temperature of your product. Be careful to take it off the product and not the bottom of the pan because you want an accurate reading. And just keep stirring this and we want to get this up to 70 or 80 degrees C because that's the temperature at which the sodium stearate is going to start dissolving nicely. And once that's up to temperature, we will just add this in tiny, tiny little increments and just stir it in to completely dissolve after each addition. This does take a while, but so long as you keep it at that temperature range the whole time and you're adding it a tiny bit at a time, you should find that you have no problems dissolving it. And if you don't want to use propylene glycol, you can substitute that for propendiol 1,3 or possibly glycerin as well. Um, the, the high level of humectants is basically uh, 
helpful addition to get this to dissolve easily for you. Um, so that's what I'm doing here and you can see the glimmers of orange where I'm checking the temperature throughout to make sure that it doesn't go too high or too low. Then when that had all dissolved and I was quite happy that it looked like this and it was a clear mixture, I took it off the heat, which again, I think was another issue. Um, in hindsight, looking at this temperature reading, that was possibly a bad omen. <laughs> but anyway, um, I carried on. I let this cool down just a little bit more um, and then I added my cool down mix. And when it first went in, it kind of looked like everything was going okay. I stirred it in, it still kind of looked okay. And then, well, you'll see what happened. Obviously fully expecting this to work, I showed you the containers and everything, but um, quick note about these containers, make sure you have wound them all the way down before you fill or you won't get much product in the, in the container. Um, I have seen some people make that mistake, so just a tip. And here we go, adding the cool down ingredients and I did start off stirring it with this, um, but then I started stirring it with a whisk because I could see it was chunking a little bit and I thought it might help. As you can see in a second, it didn't. Now, after speaking to Zach, what we think the issue was here was the fact that I used orange essential oil, which obviously is a citrus oil. Um, and we think that lowered the pH enough um, to destabilize the sodium stearate, basically, um, which is what happened there. So back to the drawing board and I thought we'd do a bit of a control for our first test. So I've coloured these with water soluble dyes because it just helps me tell them apart and instead of using my last two containers I'm going to use this little soap mould, it's quite cute, we'll make some little deodorant cat feet, why not? So this container has uh, propylene uh, glycol and distilled water and a little bit of water soluble dye just so I can tell it apart and now I'm just bringing it up to temperature um, so that I can start adding the sodium sterate as before and again the formula for this will be in the accompanying blog. Once it's up to temperature I start adding the sodium sterate bit by bit stirring in between. I have to sped this up because it is a very boring process watching me do this. It took about 12 minutes to dissolve for a 30 gram batch. Um, so yeah, it is quite tedious, but it's worthwhile in the end. And I'm just taking the temperature all the way through. You can see I'm taking those temperature readings to make sure that it stays between 70 and 80 degrees so that it's at the correct temperature to dissolve it properly. And so we don't run into any issues. And then once I run out of sodium sterate, what I'm gonna do is leave it in the water bath and turn my double boiler off. Um, so it's basically a controlled cooling and we're not cooling it too quickly and we'll let it get to sort of about sort of mid 60s and then we're okay to add our fragrance oil um, which I'm doing here um, so long as you check the flash point is is under what you're adding it at. You obviously don't want to add it in at the flash point or above or you're going to have issues. Um, and I know we'd normally add a fragrance oil at a much lower temperature. We can't really do that here. So you just have to kind of accept that some of it will evaporate off. All I'd say is just check your uh, MSDS sheets and check the flash point of any fragrance that you want to use before you add it because you will be adding it at around sort of 60 to 67 degrees <laughs> um, keep stirring it uh, stir it all in and then we're going to let this come down to about 60 and then we're going to pour it into our mold And that's our first deodorant poured and um, this is our control this is literally just a stick the basically hardened water with a fragrance in it but that doesn't make a deodorant so we need to do another test but adding some deodorizing ingredients so in this beaker I have some propylene glycol I have some distilled water I have some witch hazel which is uh, antimicrobial I also have 
some kaolin clay, which is sort of an odour absorber and moisture absorber. And obviously we're going to use our sodium stearate in a bit. And then one of the deodorising ingredients I'm using again is the deo concentrate. I'm also adding some more fragrance and I'm going to add a preservative, this time phenoxyethanol EHG or preservative 12. And I have added a little bit of water soluble dye. So this beaker here has everything uh, except for the sodium stearate preservative and fragrance oil. So we're gonna heat all of that up. We'll call that phase A, let that get to temperature and then we can start adding our sodium stearate just as we did before. And like before, I've sped this up and I've also cut some of this out because it's quite boring watching me take a temperature and just keep adding sodium stearate. But again, you're just sprinkling it on top and uh, stirring it in and it's that easy. Um, it does dissolve really readily if you're using the right dilutant. Who knew? Um, and also the right temperature. So make sure you have those two things and you're keeping the temperature constant. You can do that by adjusting the temperature on your stove up and down um, or even turning it off if it starts getting a bit too hot. And there you go, you can see it's all dissolved even though it's blue. We've got a nice sort of thin liquid and we're ready to just controlled cool it now by turning off our water bath and just keep taping the temperature until it's sort of mid 60s um, or actually depending on your um, fragrance and your preservative you uh, may want this a bit lower um, I think I took this a little bit lower just because of the phenoxyethanol EHG um, so I did uh, did wait a little bit after this um, and then just have them ready so that you can add them when the temperature is optimal and then just keep taking the temperature until um, it's about 60 or if you've added it lower than 60 then give it a good stir and then you can pour straight away um, and then you should be all right you should have a nice smooth deodorant obviously i've not actually tested this as a deodorant so i don't know if it works as it should but it definitely seems like it's worked well in terms of formulation it's got no sweating the mixing was even there's no lumps it's very smooth and it also applies very nicely with no drag and doesn't feel greasy so um, i'm happy with that and the scent also comes through so happy in fact i'm trying it again <laughs> so this is test number four Four. Um, and this is exactly the same recipe but we are adding in some emulsifying wax and um, the reason for doing this is because when speaking to Zach it seemed like the zinc needed some extra emulsifier to get it to uh, sort of emulsify with the formula um, I don't think personally I need it in my formula because the DO concentrate is a liquid form that comes with an emulsifier in it. Therefore, I think that's why mine's worked without. But I do want to see if the emulsifier makes a difference to just the overall feel of the product, um, the hardness and just how it performs. So we're going to try that. So what I've done here is the same uh, method as before. But once the propylene glycol and the distilled water and uh, things have got to about 50 degrees, then I added my emulsifying wax and let that melt down. The interesting thing about this was then the kaolin clay kind of dropped out of the mixture and it wasn't until I added the sodium stearate um, again that it sort of recombined. So I don't really know the science behind that. If anyone does leave a comment because that it's quite interesting um but anyway exactly the same method as before other than that and you're adding the sodium stearate into that mixture bit by bit keeping the temperature constant between 70 and 80 until it's all incorporated i am using slightly more sodium stearate um just by half a percent in this formula just thought i'd give that a go see if that made a difference as well um and we'll come back to this when we're ready to add our preservative and fragrance oil. 
also if you are performing quite a few experiments do watch the water in your water bath because when I was doing this I realized it had all but evaporated away at this point so excuse the extra beaker in there at one point because I heated a bit more water to add to the water bath whilst I was working because I didn't want to add cold water to it because it would bring the temperature down so I needed to heat that up and add a little bit more <laughs> just to keep that going um, but once I did that it was fine um, we kept this at a constant temperature and then once that was ready to add fragrance and preservative we did that mixed it in did our uh, cool down within the water bath by turning off the uh, the hob and then we were ready to pour this one as well This one also turned out quite well, although there was a little bit of sweating on this one, much like the red one. Um, so I don't know if the emulsifying wax had anything to do with that or the adjusted quantities of things. Um, but so far they look really good. Um, we just need to turn them out of the mold now. I left these to harden for, I don't know, probably about an hour, maybe a little bit less. You can see the red one has quite a lot of sweat on the top. Um, the other two seem okay at this point. So we're going to unmold them. It does feel very hard and it's got some nice glide on it. And it's quite clear because this is just the original stick. So if you wanted to make just a deodorant stick base, this is just your propylene glycol water and sodium stearate with a tiny bit of fragrance. Given that the fragrance is only at 0.5%, the scent throw is actually quite high. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, you don't need to add much. So that's come out well. So let's see what our other test did. Obviously I didn't mold the first one because it went wrong. Um, this one's come out very solid as well. You can see it's held the shape very well. So it's, um, it's quite a good hardener. This feels very nice on the skin. It's not draggy at all. And the scent throw again is very good. Um, and it sort of, the, the moisture sort of evaporates off the skin after you apply it. Um, it's not sticky, it's very nice. Um, I'm hopeful that if I start using that as a deodorant that it will actually work as intended, but time will tell. And then the final one. Um, again, it feels pretty much the same as the blue one, um, but yeah, just a little bit of sweat on the back that the blue one didn't have, um, so I need to sort of look into why that may have happened, um, but still feels nice on the skin, it doesn't feel draggy, it evaporates off nicely, it doesn't feel greasy, so um, I'd say kind of another win for that one, um, yeah. I'm quite pleased with these. I think what I'd like to do is a bit more experimenting, uh, maybe add a few more sort of extracts and uh, moisturising ingredients and um, perhaps a little bit more powder um, just to see how that performs. Um, but yeah, I'd call this a win. I think we may have nailed it. I now suggest going over to Zach's channel and watching all the experiments he did and the deodorant formulas he's come up with and let us know what you think. The full vlog and all of the formulas for this are on my free uh, tier on my Patreon. So just go there, join as a member and you'll be able to see these formulas and this entire blog for free. Um, and then of course, if you want to become a member on the higher tiers for my other formulas, you're more than welcome. Zach's YouTube channel and blog are also linked below so you can go and follow those and I'll see you in the next one.